Welcome to a quick tutorial on using the new IT self-service portal. Your process to get into this tool is exactly the same as our previous system. You simply log into My TCU and click on the Help Desk Ticket icon. This will automatically redirect you to the TCU SSO or Single Sign-On login page and once you log in you'll be brought directly to this particular landing page. What I'd like to do at this point is take you through a couple of the different pieces or parts of the tool that you might utilize. And the one area that I want to bring your attention to is the My Open Issues area. This is an area where it will list out all of the open or active issues that you have that have been assigned to you as a customer. This does not show you your previous historical stuff and that is located under the My Incidents tab up here in the top corner where it's going to pull up a list of all of the incidents that have ever been associated to me and you see the three that are right here that I've been a customer on. I'm going to click back on the home button to take you back so we can look at this particular issue. So if I wanted to check on the status of a particular issue that I already had open, I could click on the blue link. It would automatically bring up the issue, show me the description of the issue and all of the different updates or status fields that have been added to those particular systems. We'll get into taking a look at some of these just a little bit later. So I'm going to go back to the main landing page by clicking on the self-service home link up in the top corner again and I want to go over how to create a ticket before we get to those other stages. The two other areas that I'll point out are the problems and planned outages and the discussion boards. These are areas that you can click on the blue links on and drill down into specific areas to get more details about specific issues that we're having. You'll notice back on the side we also have a top knowledge article same way you click on the blue link and it'll take you directly in to a, a knowledge article or a knowledge base that's paired with our self-service tool. But the biggest area or the biggest reason that you'll be utilizing this tool is to create new incidents or requests. And in order to do that you've got to basically select a service from this menu that's right here in the center of the screen. What you'll basically do is start by identifying the service that best aligns with the issue that you're having. So in this case, let's say I'm dealing with a particular email issue. I'd like to maybe set up email on my mobile device like my iPhone or my Android device. I could go in, I'd click on email and calendaring, that would be the uh, uh, service in this particular case that we would start with and when it pulls up the service detail page you're going to see a couple of pieces of information one you'll notice that there are two audience fields across the top one for employees and one for students the employee screen lists out all the different details and you can scroll down this list here to identify more information about that service as well as knowledge articles down at the bottom that are specific to this particular audience if you click on the student tab you'll notice that the information in the detail screen changes as well as the items that you can make requests on. So when you come to these pages, the first thing that you need to do is select the appropriate audience that fits your status. Whether you're a faculty and staff member or you're a current student, um, you, you'll pick the particular audience that fits that status. So I'm going to go back over here to employees. Uh, I earlier said I wanted to set up email on my mobile device. So I'm going to look through this list over here. There are two different types of things that we list in this menu. One of them being things that you need or requests that you can make or things that are broken or an incident that you could submit on that particular problem. But in this case you'll notice that I've got setup help listed here and request mobile email setup is listed in this link. So I'm going to click on this particular request and it auto populates a ticket with the categorization structure that I had selected as well as provides me with some details on how to go through this process. Some tickets will have forms that you you'll have to fill out and additional areas of information that will populate this particular area. But the areas that you need to focus on the most in the creation of the ticket are the ones marked in red. So what I would do in this particular case is provide a preferred contact number. So I'm going to type in a number in this in this field. Once I've typed in a phone number, I can go through and add a description. I need my email set up on my iPhone. Oops. Once you've written in a good description, 
It's always good to provide as much detail as you possibly can. The more detail, the easier it is for the individual who takes your ticket to be able to resolve the problem. And then you have to identify the urgency of the ticket. Is this affecting multiple people? Well, since I'm setting up email on my iPhone, it's not, so I'm going to say no. And does this prevent me from doing my primary job? In this case, I can still check my email on a computer or use the web interface, so no, this does not uh, prevent me from being able to do my primary job. Then after those are filled out and any other data in this specific screen or this form that pops up off to the right hand side, if I fill out any of the content that's there, the last thing that I need to do is submit this incident. But one thing I'll point out is the ability to add an attachment. If you wanted to add a screenshot, of a particular issue that you were having or you wanted to add a list or an, of an Excel file anything that you would add that would help to complement uh, the resolution of your ticket all you have to do is hit the add incident button and you can simply go through and upload your file by clicking the little plus green sign right there I'm going to cancel out of adding this particular uh, attachment and I'm going to go ahead and submit my incident once I submit my incident, it automatically creates the incident. It gives me some information about assignment and when, the, when it was created and last modified. And I'll have my list below of any actual entries that have been added in on this incident since it's been received. Since I just created the incident, no action has been taken. So you won't see any information when you initially create the ticket. You do have the option, although when you, fir when you come in to look at a ticket after it's been created, to add additional comments or info. And you can do that by clicking the Add Info button. When that comes up, it says, please enter additional information in the provided field. And this is going to show up as something that we call a customer request. So I also need this set up on my iPad. Maybe I just put in that I wanted it on my iPhone, but decided that I also needed it on my iPad as well. When you press the OK button, it's going to post out a journal entry that will list down here that the individual who is assigned your ticket will be able to read and respond to. And you can look at the different things that are in here or drill down into them by double clicking on it. And it pulls up the journal note and pulls up a more descriptive uh, field. Now you can switch back and forth between the descriptive field view and the form or grid view uh, by selecting the view button and dropping down to the area that you want. I'm going to go back to the grid view which lists all of them out because if you have a lot of them here it's a lot easier to be able to see it from this view. Now once I've gone in and I've added any notes, I've added any attachments that I need at that point, I'm done with the creation of this particular ticket. That, get, that gets escalated over to the IT support help desk. They'll review it from a self-service perspective and identify where it needs to be escalated or managed from. We'll do the work and then uh, get back in touch with you and uh, let you know that that issue has been resolved. Generally, we'll set an early expectation once these have been taken care of about when that will get, you know, get done. And a consultant will generally reach out to you to let you know the status of the issue or when things change or we need additional information from you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here and click back on self-service home. I'm done with this particular ticket and you'll notice that now I have two tickets listed in my uh, in my my open issues because I just created that new one. I'll also receive an email at the same time that tells me that a new ticket was created for me in this particular case. The self-service tool is very easy to use. It gives you a lot more flexibility than our previous tool. But one of the things that I'll note is that all of your previous history and the other tool that we had will not be available in this tool. So you will be starting fresh when you first log in. And you're only going to be able to see your new incidents that you create from now on. Uh, we will still have access to all of that data and can refer to any older tickets that you have requested information about. But we just want to keep everyone and keep that in mind as you're using this new new tool. One of the last things that I'll point out is some information across the top and that's the knowledge base and which you'll also see that that's in the menu bar up at the top where you see knowledge home and the knowledge base is a fairly recent addition of where we've moved all of the uh, kind of basic info and instructional pages off of our website and into our knowledge base tool to give you something that you can utilize and interact with. So if I click on knowledge base here it's going to split it out again by audience so you'll see a list of all of the 
incidents here and down at the bottom in two different views but it's going to split it out again by audience between student and employee in this case I'm going to say you know what I want to go look at something for employee and maybe maybe that ticket that I put in earlier about how to set up email on my mobile device was already listed here maybe this was the area that I should have started at and if you look here under email and calendaring set up email on my iOS device if I click on that knowledge article and then select the one that pops up aha there we go there's all of the information I would need to actually set up TCU email on my mobile device I could go through and tell them later on that they could close out the ticket because I was able to resolve the issue myself using the self-service tool you have options over to the side to, to like or dislike um, particular issues more along the lines of was this article really helpful and allowing us to make adjustments if we see articles that are not helpful to people but one of the key things that uh, I find is most important is the ability to be able to email this particular document to yourself. If I click on email this to me, it'll, after a couple of seconds it's going to pop up with a form that has all of this data embedded in the email and I'll scroll through this and you'll see all of the pictures are embedded in this particular message and it's already set to send directly to me. If I hit the OK button I'll uh, shortly receive an email with all of the information that was listed in this particular knowledge article and uh, I'll be able to take it from there and be able to do what I need from that knowledge article. So it's a very quick and easy way to extract content from our knowledge base without having to have the window open and scroll through to get all of the information to take the actions that you need. At this point, I'm going to go back. I can either choose to go back to the Knowledge Home, which will take me back to that previous uh, dashboard that I can select between student or employee for different knowledge articles. And you'll notice that when I click on student, there's a different set or a different dashboard that pops up for issues that are specific to student problems. Then I can also go back to my self-service home, uh, in, and in this particular case, since I found the knowledge article that I had already previously created, um, or uh, that I'd created a ticket for, I might go in and make a note that says, hey, you can close out this issue. So here's the one that says request configuration. I need my email set up on my iPhone. I'm going to click on this particular ticket, and I'm going to add some info and say, I found the information on how to do this in the knowledge base please close this ticket now oh and I misspelled knowledge and once I submit this into the customer request area the consultant who's been uh, assigned to this particular ticket will get a message be able to see the update and they can either reach back out to you based on the comment that you made or be able to close out the ticket in this case so you can see the value of either utilizing the information that's listed here or utilizing our knowledge base to be able to resolve particular issues so at this point i am uh, pretty much gone over all of the different components that are in our self-service tool. You're more than welcome to always contact the help desk if you have any questions or any problems with using the self-service portal, and we're more than happy to walk you through any steps in learning to utilize the new tool. We definitely encourage you to take the opportunity to go through and click on each of the different services and, and select your particular audience. The detail information that's listed in these screens is really great information to give you more of an idea of the services that we provide but kind of a default understanding of how that service works and the types of requests and uh, incidents that you could submit in these particular issues. The last thing that I will point out is that if you ever do create a ticket and you're in the particular service area that's related to the problem that you have and you just cannot find it in the list, you can always use this not listed above button. When you click on that button, it's automatically going to categorize it with a generic category and give you some pointers on what you might be able to do to resolve those particular issues without having to submit this problem. Once we receive that ticket, we'll either recategorize it or, uh, or move it to a different area that you might not have uh, seen in that particular list to get it appropriately categorized in our system. If I don't want to use this ticket anymore, because I was just using this for an example, and I clicked back over on the self-service home button, keep in mind that it will ask you whether or not you wanted to save those changes. I'm going to say no in this case because I want to abandon that particular ticket.
Otherwise, that's pretty much all of the different features in the self-service portal. We're really excited about where the new tool is going to go and hope that it provides you some additional insight and, and opportunity to be able to look at the status of what you've got going on in your self-service tool or your self-service incidents. Uh, again, if you do have questions or problems, please feel free to contact the IT Support Help Desk and we'll assist you in any way possible. Thank you very much and have a great day.